In the early 2000s, the DVD and tournament era of battle rap would come to an end, and the main focus for many of the soon-to-be mega platforms would be to transition to cultivating talent and growing their respective newly founded leagues. Many megastars would be unearthed in the process, and they would be discovered not only in the hotspot of modern day battle rap, namely New York, but all across the country. The Midwest would bring several important figures that would go on to dominate the sport from 2010 onwards, and one name in particular, hailing from St. Louis, would arguably become the driving force of not only his city, but also the entire Midwest. His iconic moments in many different battles would become some of the most revered highlights in modern day battle rap. He impressively would become a travel tested road warrior very early in his career, with the vast majority of his biggest battles and wins being on the road. This is due in no small part to his mastery of performance that has allowed him to not only become a fan favourite but also an acclaimed all-rounder that has now, in 2024, become the new endgame battle for many MCs in the game. In this video we will explore the life, times and legendary career of St. Louis' own Hitman Hollow, including the highs, lows and everything in between in Ball Game, The Hitman Hollow Story. Early life for Gerald Fulton would begin in St. Louis, Missouri as the oldest child of four to Sue Fulton and his namesake, Gerald Fulton, aka Big Gerald. The Fultons, including not only Big Gerald's generation, but the one above it, would have strong ties to the west side of St. Louis, specifically the 5100 block, which is more widely known as the Scan. This well-known neighborhood would be made up of both Bloods and Crips and would be a big fixture in Gerald's childhood due to his family's long history within the area. Big Gerald would move his family to North County and eventually, at the age of 14, Gerald would be one of the founders of the Black Mob Crew which would comprise of many of his fellow young teenagers from their media areas. This crew would grow in size and down the line they would also come up with the Yet Yet slogan that would become synonymous with an older hitman in the future. With St. Louis regularly ranking as one of the most dangerous cities in America, it would become commonplace for many of the youth throughout the city to start their own crews within their neighbourhoods. Despite the dangers of the city, Gerald Jr. would be encouraged to pursue his natural talents, education and interests, which would lead to his first love, sports. He would be a gifted athlete and would impressively excel in multiple sports including football, baseball, swimming, gymnastics and most famously basketball in which he'd be given a scholarship to go to college. He would also impressively average well over 20 points per game regularly in his later college years. During this formative period, Gerald would begin to take rap more seriously as he had showcased his potential with his ability on the mic on many different radio sessions throughout the city. He would actually sign to the Track Boys label straight out of high school at the age of 16 and he would choose to pursue this over sports as they as a production team were signed to a major label namely Def Jam and had engineered several hits including Air Force Ones by Nelly and Tipsy by Jake Wan. Unfortunately, due to differences between the label heads, they would choose to separate not too long after, resulting in Gerald choosing to return to school and finish off his basketball career. It is difficult to tell how far he could have ended up had he continued his basketball endeavours without the year gap, but as evidence of his major talent on the court, he still had concrete offers to play in countries such as Spain and Australia. His career path for the time being however would be chosen for him as he would begin to get a major buzz for his battles within the city. His ability to be called up and battle and beat MCs regardless of the prep time or location would lead to him being compared by his friends to a hitman that could do the job and all that was needed was a quick holler. 
thus birthing the name Young Holler, which would eventually morph into Hitman Holler. Hitman's prowess as a teen battle rap prodigy was noticed by many in his immediate circle in St. Louis and also by those that would run across him in passing. So much so that before he would even have an official on-camera battle, he already had many off-camera legendary moments under the age of 17. For example, at the young age of 14, he would battle T-Rex over the phone in a battle that was set up by Gene Deal the well-known former bodyguard of P. Diddy. Gene would hear that Hitman wanted to get into rap and through his connection with Big Gerald, he would set the battle up to test his skills. He would also at the age of 16 have a battle with fellow Midwest great Clean Paper, who was living in St. Louis at the time, and this would last for around 9-10 to 10 rounds. His buzz would only continue to grow and he would win many local battles on a smaller scale at many of the teen clubs around the city. His first major break would come at the age of 17 as he would be encouraged to enter into the Fight Club by Kiwan and Murphy Lee of the St. Lunatics. Fight Club would be coming down to St. Louis as part of their multiple city tour to find the best battler that would then gain a chance to win $50,000 in New York. Hitman would enter the tournament and first encounter local St. Louis legend DMAC and to many surprise, he would beat him and get to the finals, where he would face another talented up-and-comer, Remy D. This battle would be a close one, and despite entering sudden death, Hitman would pull out the judge victory and become one of the youngest Fight Club winners to date. This would lead to Hitman turning his full attention to the biggest league emerging in St. Louis, namely Street Status. This legendary league created by O, would provide a pivotal platform for not only Hitman, but many of the most notable St. Louis battlers at the time, as well as being a key cornerstone for the soon-to-be Midwest movement. A-Verb in conjunction with O would run his popular World War events through the Street Status platform. Hitman's first appearance would be in 2008 versus Cali, and in this battle, he would begin to build up momentum and buzz not only in the city, but online. His next matchup would be against arguably the hottest battler in the city at the time, namely Young Ill, who had been marked out as arguably the best talent the city had on offer during this time period. This underrated match would still turn out to be a great back and forth despite Hitman's slight turbulence, and it would only help to boost his name by going toe to toe with arguably street status's biggest name at the time. He would spend the rest of 2008 and early 2009 honing his craft on the platform and he would only continue to improve in his battles against Birdie, Grimm, Remedy and Cashola. Following these impressive performances, Hitman's name would immediately shoot to the top of many key players' radars as a standout talent. Harlem legend and Lions Den owner Loaded Lux would be sent Hitman's battles and he would eventually contact Averb and ask for Hitman personally. This conversation between the two would eventually morph into plans for an entire card which would become the well-known Street Status vs Lions Den event that was scheduled to go down in February 2009. The original plans for the card included Averb vs Head Ice, Young Ill vs Goods, and Arsenal vs Hitman Hollow. Hitman would not be able to make the match due to him needing to be at college for an important basketball tournament. History would still be made however as on the night itself with the head ice and a verb battle falling through, Verb would take to the street and battle SB and his legendary performance in New York would kickstart the Midwest takeover from 2009 onwards. The excitement that the Midwest MCs brought to the game was undeniable. So much so that throughout 2009, many call outs would be made back and forth between the major Midwest names such as A Verb, Hitman, Young Gil, Calico, and Big T, amongst others, 
versus the East Coast heavy hitters such as Rex, Goods, Hollow, Arsenal and Conceited, just to name a few. Arguably the biggest back and forth would come from the mismatch up only a few months earlier, namely Hitman Hollow versus Arsenal. With no notable battle rap media outlets being around during that time period, Arsenal and Hitman would do their own blogs, going back and forth, and this would not only build the hype of the match, but the possibility that things could actually spill over into real life. They would both go viral and make world star hip hop, and would be one of the first examples of how stellar promo could further increase the fans desire to see the match. Also, ho, we see right through you. This nigga, man, you yeah, fucking yeah. stupid. Is this nigga stupid, man? He's stupid, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah, this nigga yeah, stupid. Yeah, He's stupid. Man, hey, come to the middle of the map, Come to the middle of the map, man. Come down here, man. Come down here, man. You cannot. You cannot. You say I can't come to Jersey. You cannot. Man, you can't come no. You gonna come a verb to come battle? Strike him up like a puppet, man. This stupid motherfucker. Hey, he better not come icy. Like you better not come at all. You better not come at all, man. Hey, good. I saw you back there. I knew you really had. I know you look like you a real nigga. I know you don't get down like that. I know you, you sitting on the couch like this dumb this motherfucker. Dumb this <laughs> stupid, illiterate motherfucker, man. Hey, I got real ghouls behind me. I got real crips behind me. Like, I got real bloods behind me. I got real GD niggas. Like, this what you fail to realize. Hey, I'm talking about this one. Like, this what you fail to realize, man. Don't let that college and all that shit, whatever them hating ass niggas texting you and sending you shit on my face. Don't, them St. Louis niggas, bro. Don't let them niggas fool you, man. I'm a fucking young boss, real. If you come down here, I swear to God, your dreads be the only thing that make it back to Jersey. We gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. In between this back and forth of Arsenal, one of Hitman's first key milestones would be in mid-2009, as he would have his first battle against a battler from New York, namely Rich Dollars. O and A Verb, to their credit, would choose to capitalise on the buzz that they were receiving, and Verb would take a back seat on promotion and would instead return to battling. O would put together and pay for the Hollow the Don vs Averb match in St. Louis, with Rich Dollars and Hitman Hollow being the co-main event. Rich to his credit would come down to St. Louis and in a hostile environment would put on one of the best performances in his career. Hitman who by this point had been adding to his arsenal over the past year would also show how great he had become and he would match Rich's performance leading to this being what many would consider Hitman's first classic. This whole match yo was BS. I was waiting for Rex. Instead, they sent this reject from the BX who Arsenal ain't strong enough. Speaking of him, he next. <laughs> the internet made you big up close, you a thin fella. I packed double Minnesota twin metal. I'm a trendsetter. If we beef at 11, you disappearing by 12 like Cinderella. <laughs> Hey, I met his bitch on Facebook. She dumbfounded, but she's cute. Gave me the rundown. This nigga wanna be mook. Asked what's my fantasy, cause she'll be pleased to. Sent me some Yankee tickets and told me I she ain't screw. In other words, I went to where she stay at. Pulled my boxes down, that's where she put her face at. Jumped up out the bed like, where you want me to spray at? She said, it doesn't matter, plus this for Richie lady. <laughs> You think me? You crazy as fuck. For the sheets of paper, I staple you up. You better watch how you shining. I promote violence. I whisper to my nigga, and now they can't find him. Y'all all confused, cause he was just rhyming. Y'all searching, but he's still missing like assignments. I bring you to your grill, my index in your lineman. Football style, I put holes through your lineman. Fuck what you heard. St. Louis get drastic. We ball like the Rucker, but it's more like Jurassic. You to the niggas watching, I put Rich, dollar, hello to die, the dinner night, what up, baby verb, it's dinner time. Hey, they say he got paper, they say he got green, but we all see he broke like an x-ray machine. He over here front and like, he's some type of king. Hello, your barrel tell it all, you got a hood full of queens. Psych, 
He all hype, I know it's tight Before the fight, he hit the ground twice And my pound tight So just know, if you hear the sound click You gonna get more than a sound bite I chop him up like a sound bite And then the cops should tell his mom Yo, your son has been found twice He on lock, I got clamp D I chalk him up with a M's B Run in his house, make the trap leave I put the pistol to his grab knees Bury his kids in the garden Cops come when I'm done, like what you doing? I'm just playing C the major buzz, specifically from the St. Louis camp of MCs, would lead to the URL deciding to partner up with Street Status and hold their second event ever and first away from New York in St. Louis in December 2009 for the Midwest Massacre card. This pivotal event would see the Midwest MCs face off against each other aside from the outlier of Conceited versus Jesse James. An altercation between Hitman and Remedy's camps threatened to derail the event, but fortunately, tempers were cooled, and despite the switch of venue, Hitman was still able to perform against Chicago's own Big T. His URL debut would go supremely well, and he would mark himself out as one of the Midwest's premier talents, even against his own peers. The stellar performance from both MCs in this battle would lead to many crowning this as Hitman's second classic in a row. You and what other Chicago rapper gonna help you overcome this lecture? Cause in order for you to win, you need Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, mm -hmm. and Devin Hester. Mm -hmm. Brian Erlacher, Twister, and R. Kells. But Rock Obama and the First Lady Michelle. Hollow <laughs> <laughs> to die, he need the bars, Pac Road in jail. Country grammar sales, Rambo shells, Sonic tails. Quick trip, shells, heaven, hell, sharks, whales, and that's just for a nigga to say, Big T, you did well. <laughs> Your bitch called me for sex. I make it take me to the mall first. Come back, D throw me to a jaws hurt. He can't even show a better house. She make him call first. <laughs> he hard headed, pops up, she meet her. Now we all hurt. <laughs> you pick a bunch of lame niggas, all jerks. A hundred bucks combined, which y'all all work. <laughs> hey, you can't 50 D. Good, cause I'ma let the 40 shake and turn Smack DVD into Channel A and E, cause I'ma shoot the first 48. <laughs> this water too shallow for you to try to dive in. If you don't wanna die. Better watch your eyes then. I go to his granny house like knock knock. Who is it? Trap, let my guys in. She's screaming, don't shoot me. Ain't nobody finna shoot you. Bitch, we brought them knives in. What's new boys? I listen for the cries when I spot her. I pick her up by her thighs then. Put her under my chin. Cut her across the chest. It looked like I'm playing the violin. Oh, you put me in the deal with any line. I win. I'ma fuck your ass up though for the time being. Following this event, the collective Midwest MCs on the card would realise their star power and potential, and also the very real possibility that they could take over not only battle rap in their respective cities, but also what many would consider the birthplace of modern day battle rap, New York. This would lead to the official creation of the Midwest movement, with the three cornerstones being Detroit, Chicago and St. Louis. URL's third event in New York would see three of the Midwest movement's key players booked on the card. Calico would match up with Rich Dollars, Averb would be the main event versus Math Hoffa, and Hitman would match up against Cortez. Despite this being Hitman's first battle in New York, he would arguably be the performer of the night on the card itself, and he would showcase his crowd control, haymakers, and performance were well above many of his peers. With the Midwest versus New York rivalry beginning to peak during this time, many of the battles that stemmed from it would lead to classics due to neither MC wanting to let their side down. This was definitely the case for this battle and it would lead to Hitman having his third classic in a row. He's searching for a lifeline, too bad I ain't that Regis cat. New York wanna shut me down, y'all need more than that Regis cat. So don't start, cause for them dead bread, 
Dutch, I spark and leave this man dead. You just a Mexican that rep New York, but lose when it matter the most. You Mark Sanchez. <laughs> Call him outside. I told him, bitch, nigga, man, no. He was like, man. I said, man, what? <laughs> Like, no, nah, I'm just saying. You saying what? <laughs> Remind you of mom's coming from the grocery store the way we put them cans up. Oh. I'm all for the static game. It's a mathematic game. Grab a flame. I slide up on them like baggage claim. Oh. Fuck it. I ain't even want a battle. I had plans to show his ass. That I smoke his ass. Shake hands with kind. Shake hands with the dime. Get to him. Choke his ass, dandelion style. Dig him, plant him, throw his ass. That X must be a factor. Better run miles, I'll kinda throw his ass. Catch him at a show, pull up on some Honda shit. Bombs and shit, nines and fits. With two llama clips, hop on stage while he performing on some little mama shit. You a question, who believe in all this crime shit? Fool for thought. We don't feed into that nonsense. Mm. They call me Hitman. We between the five prints. This weapon not on safety. It ain't John Lynch. Oh. Night vision came with a scope. See behind tents. Michael Jackson Motown glove. You can't find prints. When they say the best, they say power. Sign stitched. I won't lose. You wouldn't beat me with a time glitch. Hitman would only have one more battle in 2010, and it would be to close the chapter on arguably the biggest grudge match at the time versus Arsenal the Rebel. After much back and forth, the battle would be set up for December 2010 and would see Hitman have his first URL main event in New York in only his third URL battle. This would also be Arsenal's first appearance on URL. With his stellar work on Grind Time, Fight Club and Lions Den, he would be ranked as one of the biggest battlers on the scene during this time period. Despite the heated rivalry, Hitman and Arsenal would keep it all in the ring. And Hitman in particular would cement himself as a top tier with his stand-up performance in this battle. All six rounds from both MCs would live up to the hype, and upon its release on Christmas, it would immediately be devoured by fans and would become the first URL battle to ever hit 1 million views. It remains one of Hitman's best performances to date and with this showing, he would have his fourth classic in a row. Its replay value is evident as it sits at just over 4.9 million views. On the scale of one and ten of your raps, about a zero, y'all put the new villain against a guitar hero? Who you think you fooling, us? You bring cops through, gangsters, killers, thugs. I bring block through. Uh -huh. His homeboy keep talking while I'm rapping. Not cool. The contract said I can't hit this nigga. Not you. There's a list of some stupid shit you should not do. I come around, you around, do not move. I'm cracking smile, I'm not your power, not cool. You goldfishes, not allowed in the crock pool. And if they jump in, understand that they crock fool. He on his high horse, cause he thinking that his family royal. I'll run through your family royal. You a prince? Well, I snatch your princess. Trigger fucker with twin texts. And the queen, well, they fly by next. They ricochet and hit the king, mama, like Delonte West. <laughs> Arsenal swapping down, he clapped texts. I remember like it was yesterday. He said, at the next URL event, I'm a smack wet. <laughs> For some strange reason, I fucking believed him. <laughs> Not all rappers lie, I mean, well, over most of them. Make a long story short, I walked in, despite both of them. I said, oh shit. <laughs> Anytime now, Austin should be approaching him. <laughs> he should take that angle and smack him that way in my head. I started coaching him. <laughs> he turned around, saw Rex, saw me, and did this. <laughs> Man, I started ghosting him. Hard beating fast, he nervous. I'm losing the whole film. I gave him benefit of the doubt, like, baby, he's too sober. 
He don't want to fuck up the battles. He probably wait until it's over. We get outside. That's on my mom's children. That nigga wave body every rapper in the <laughs> From his work in 2009 and 2010, Hitman had cemented himself as arguably the biggest star not only in the Midwest movement, but on URL. He had made the leap in a very short time period from outstanding rookie to top tier battler. With his success, he had blown away the perception that many outside of St. Louis had of rappers from that city all being non-lyrical and having melodic rap styles only. His top tier status was cemented with his next booking as the main event for the biggest ever event URL had thrown thus far, namely Summer Madness. The headlining slot would see Hitman booked against Hollow the Don over big names from New York such as Charlie Clips, Conceited, T-Rex, K-Shine, Math Hoffa and DNA. Unfortunately, the URL would make the decision to use handheld mics, which would severely harm a performer such as Hitman, and the audio upon release would also not be the cleanest. Despite this not being an excuse, it would lead to a lackluster battle for both Hitman and Hollow. He would have an impromptu battle versus Farah and Shuni this same year, that would eventually be released two years later in 2013. This performance on 15 minutes prep would be a great one and would lead to more history as he would be a part of the first ever male versus female battle on URL. His final showing of the year would be at home for the Battle America platform versus Goods. Despite Hitman having some good material in this battle, he would unfortunately choke and many would give the battle to Goods. Following back-to-back -back showings that many of Hitman's fans were not happy with, he would go back to the drawing board and seek to redeem himself in 2012. With the Midwest movement dominating multiple cards for the past few years, the question would inevitably rise as to who was the actual best in the movement. Despite a pre-agreement between most of the movement that they would go at all of the other cities and have no battles between them, some members of the movement would, over time, not be as opposed to battling their own comrades. Many of the movement, including Calico and X Factor in particular, would point to Hitman's next battle versus Averb as the key catalyst to why the Midwest movement fell apart and the floodgates opening for them to battle each other. There seemed to be a plethora of different reasons as to why both MCs eventually agreed to the match, with some of the key ones being Verb feeling that Hitman was not going as hard as he was against the New York MCs, especially after the booing he received at SM1. Another supposed reason was that the fans and camps of both MCs would essentially place seeds in both of their ears as to one being better than the other. And the last was that they were essentially battling for hometown pride and to determine once and for all who was the King of St. Louis. Their mega match would again evidence their drawing power as they would have URL pick up the battle and set up the King of the Arch card in St. Louis. This match, despite ending the Midwest movement, would give fans a timeless classic and would see Hitman return to form. The personal angles, heavy haymakers and multiple quotables by both MCs would lead to it aging like fine wine and it would eventually be revered by both fans and MCs alike as one of the best battles of all time. Its replay value is evident, with it sitting at just over 4.5 million views. Oh, fuck Top J 
said, give me that underdog status. I walked in, hugs from the bitches, the bats. He walked in, tragic, no looks, magic. <laughs> For the bills, I turn into a gator like Brad. God. You a bitch. Hands up, you need to bark and you bite. You was a sucker back then, you a sucker at night. Anytime you feel tempted, it's nothing to fight. I cut this ring off, my foot grow tougher than mice. By the time that you agree, you can snuff with a white. You marketable, I'm remarkable with nothing to like. And you act the way you act because your love is a dyke. you learn as a kid. Fuck rap. A nigga curse you, it's mandatory that you cuss back. A nigga rush you, it's mandatory that you rush back. A nigga shoot at you, it's mandatory that you shot back. A nigga touch you, it's mandatory that you touch back. Talk to that. And you did a song with GSI behind King Wine back. And he used to give you money. Never mind. Besides that, you did some shit then show, you ain't want no contact. GSI bomb first. When are you gonna bomb back? Let a nigga touch me, Tremaine. Well, nah, Jack. We got Banana Club, Mardi Gras, Time Show. Yeah. Woo! Shotgun, yeah. Playboy, don't never care. All you hear is get, get the blood fly everywhere. Yeah. 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 It's a lot of ways to fuck with the Slayer. Yeah. Yeah. The black gloves, rubber grip with the ray on chip. I come in one of her parties with an AR clip and shoot soon as I get in like I'm J.R. Smith. Yeah. Woo! The black gloves, rubber grip with the radar chip. The black gloves, rubber grip with the radar chip. I come to one of the burn bars with an AR clip and shoot soon and shoot soon and shoot soon. I'm too soon, I'm too soon. It's like me and like I'm dead. His second and final battle for the year would see him make his second consecutive Summer Madness appearance against one of the best newcomers, John John the Don. Initially, URL would be opposed to having this matchup on Summer Madness 2 and would instead want Hitman to battle DNA. Hitman to his credit would push for the John John matchup as he felt the time was right for it. This would either intentionally or unintentionally put the spotlight on John John and turn him into a superstar overnight and firmly remove him from the PG slash rookie process. NBA player Terence Williams would actually sponsor the specific battle due to URL still not being 100% certain about the matchup, and the hype would be built with a video that went viral between John John the Don and Hitman as they would get into an entertaining lengthy back and forth that was captured on camera whilst URL were preparing for their card in Chicago. On the night itself, both MCs despite being lower on the card would have what many would call the battle of the night, with many classic lines and moments coming from this matchup. Both MCs, along with Charlie Clips, would be worthy runners up and only be beaten for performer of the night by Loaded Lux. The showing from both MCs in this battle would ensure that Hitman would add another classic to his resume. It sits as the second highest viewed battle from Summer Madness 2, at just over 5.5 million views. Before I prove why I'm way better, I figured I can help you. This the round I mold and groom. You hear that? I ain't even rhymed yet and I'm already teaching the little nigga how to control the room. <laughs> Talk to that nigga. You should be smiling. All fucking night. Don't frown in my presence. You know who else on this card? We ain't ordinary people. I put John around legends. You having close battles with Bill Collector? Everything I got paid for, so those kind of niggas can't even call my phone. See, I wipe the floor with clean. He a cheap sauce. I like my food cooked in the same breath I eat raw. Jones think he chiller? What am I? A deep frost. Why I can't snuck in the States? I get him shipped cross. Rookies? Man, man, these rookies got me pissed off. Lose y'all crazy? That's how I give it up. Yo, New York, I'm so HD. Basketball player, so please don't make me run up, stop, pull up, shot out, JC. I 
most of Vietnam shit, saving Private Ryan shit, all that times four. Chopper wake the block, sound like I'm starting a lawnmower. Cops spot bits and pieces of them, they like, my lord. I'm in Spain by the time that they find more. Have a kid knock on the front, come through the side door. Money ain't a part of the plan, what you alive for? Four or five for you, what you trying to give me your five for? Like the whole stage, someone managed your life for. Got that four or five, like fuck it. Give him nine more, turn his apple to seed. See what they call him John's for. Johnny Apple. Oh. Are those freckles on your face? Stop acting like a bad guy. That Max 5 will put him in the earth like a bad vibe. Bring him back point blank range. Knock the brains out of him. Then reload with the bullets that came out of him. What's those freckles on your face? Stop acting like a bad guy. That Max 5 will put him in the earth like a bad vibe. That Max 5 will put him in the earth like a bad vibe. Bring him back, point break range and knock the brains out of him. Then reload with the bullets that came. Then, then, then reload with the bullets that came out of him. One minor asterisk of a successful summer madness for Hitman would be his incident that he would get into at the PGs some days prior. After a heated back and forth on Twitter, Hitman would approach Bill Collector outside of the event whilst waiting to get in to address some of the things that he had said on Twitter. After a brief exchange, Hitman's younger brother, Show Up, would get into an altercation with Bill Collector, who would then have an infamous video circulate online of him tending to his wounds in the immediate aftermath of the fight. This would eventually set down the building blocks for a grudge match that would come to life much later down the line. Hitman's next major focus would be on his headlining matchup versus Math Hoffa in St. Louis on King Juice's Triumph Over Demise card. The footage would be well below battle rap standards in terms of how it was recorded, and both MCs would eventually go on to release their full rounds on YouTube, which housed some potential material that would have been received great on both ends had the audio been perfect. His next main stage outing would be for his first GNOME appearance as the co-main event on GNOME 3 vs Brooklyn Zone conceited. This would be a battle of two halves, with both first rounds being standouts on the night. The second rounds would be a drop off from the first, but still good. However, the third from both MCs would lead to booze on both ends and Hitman and Con in later years would say that their friendship may have affected their preparation for one another specifically in the third round. Despite this, it still remains the highest viewed battle from Gnome 3 with just over 5.8 million views. Con, rap about your wardrobe, some shit that you really got. Don't rap about a war road, shit that you ain't never shot. All you know is polo, Fendi on a buckle. What you know about a solo, 30 minute scuffle? What you know about game fights, 30 niggas rush you and your head on a swivel, cause a nigga might cut you. <laughs> you don't really want that action. You worried about matching. Kind use a bitch cause my bitch can fit your jacket. New York, New York, I ain't bragging, but a nigga living good and rich. I'm not that, son, house, cars. Yeah, I got that. Kind four years older than me and still live with his mama. So bragging is what a goofy do. If I live with my mama, my closet will be Gucci too. <laughs> So what you put Stone Bill? Why you ain't do that to Sway? Were we supposed to be spooked because you brought watch? Fuck shotgun, sure. When have sure gun shot? Hey, and all you niggas bringing props to win? I ain't with that. If Holla bring a prop, that bitch gon' come with a kickback. Soon as I lift that, watch your nigga load it up. That bitch gon' kaboom. Lil' brother gon' have to hold me up. You niggas bringing props to win? I ain't with that. If Holla bring a prop, that bitch gon' come with a kick. If Holla bring a prop, that bitch gon' come with a kick. As soon as I lift that, watch the nigga load it. Soon, soon as I lift that, watch the nigga load it. That bitch gon' kaboom. That bitch gon' kaboom. That bitch gon' kaboom. That bitch go kaboom.
The fallout from this battle would result in Hitman's first major gripe with the URL and the ensuing back and forth between the two parties would lead to Hitman not doing any more business with URL for over a year. Most likely due to the third round being poor, URL would choose to hold the footage for almost three months. Within the first month, this would infuriate Hitman who would take to Twitter to vent his frustrations. He would threaten Norbs, Beasley and Smack after seeing Arsenal and Averb, a battle that was booked and shot after Gnome 3, was being dropped before him and Conceited. This, coupled with the difficulties that URL had in booking Loaded Lux, would lead to Smack choosing to publicly declare that Summer Madness would be going with a bars over names theme. Many had concluded that this was because they were unable to book some of the megastars due to their prices and due to their backstage issues such as Loaded Lux, Hitman Holler and Hollow the Dawn. Despite many fans being upset that Hitman would miss Summer Madness 3, he would still feed his fans and set up a one round battle between himself and T-Rex in St. Louis. This battle would be a good back and forth and would be a good precursor to a life-changing 2014. In early 2014, Nick Cannon, a huge fan of the battle rap scene, would reach out to Hitman to offer him an audition for Wild and Out. Seeing conceited success, Hitman would accept the audition, but at the time did not have the funds to make it out to New York, as Wild and Out would not pay for his flight and accommodation. Hitman would reach out to his good friend and NFL star, Jeremy Macklin who would be more than happy to give Hitman the $2,500 needed to make it to the audition. His only request was that Hitman would ace the audition. Hitman would do just that and the rest would be history. He would still leave his battle rap fans with fresh work as he would begin to tour around other leagues in the wake of his feud with URL. He would rack up two good back-to-back -back battles for his U-Dub and Guerrilla Warfare debuts versus O-Red and Charlie Clips respectively. A hiatus would understandably come after this with Hitman continuing to gain more and more traction and stardom on Wild and Out. He would have what many would call the best Wildstar battle ever in a rematch with Conceited which would see them bring the smack URL feel to mainstream TV. Despite what many saw on the final product, both MCs would say that some bits were cut out and moved around and that the original battle was much longer. In September of the same year, his family would receive some devastating news as Sue Fulton would be diagnosed with breast cancer. Fortunately, after years of treatment, Hitman's mother would beat cancer and many notable names including 50 Cent, Nick Cannon, Drake, Snoop Dogg as well as players from the NFL and NBA would donate to Mrs Fulton's fundraiser. Despite this eventual happy outcome, you have to remember at the time, Hitman was dealing with this diagnosis as the oldest child and rock of the family. He would decide to remain strong and continue to work and he would be booked for Snoop's gladiator school in the same month versus Calico. Many would give Calico the win in this battle, with Hitman's main focus being his main event booking only one week later versus Sue Surf for his anticipated URL return on Summer Madness 4. This would be a battle years in the making for two of the culture's biggest stars that many would consider the leaders of the new school modern era. The lead up to this battle would be filled with major pre-battle hype from fans and battlers alike and on the night itself and despite Hitman having the Calico battle the week prior, they would go on to have the battle of the night on Summer Madness 4. Following the conclusion of the event, this match would go on to be an instant classic with Surf's third and Hitman's first being incredible highlights in a great three round 
back and forth. This would resonate with the entire culture and it would go on to not only be the most viewed battle from Summer Madness 4, but would eventually become and still remains the highest viewed battle on the URL channel at just over 9.7 million views. And say what well, y'all be floss with it because where I'm from, we praise the shooters, not the niggas that get caught with it. Man, I'm undefeated with a weapon. Shit, I'm a boss, nigga. And it's loaded. Fuck, Marks. This calico ain't lost, nigga. You see, my boys in the hood, I brought plenty convicts, and death is the answer to. Nick, you brought Shug. I'm like, why? That nigga's a bitch. <laughs> we ain't seen shotgun put in work since Ricky got hit. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? Our uh, Sue Surf is going to be a watery death. Broad day, plain sight. His mama going to have to wear a bathing suit and scuba gear to visit the grave site. <laughs> if I use this heavy metal, if I use this heavy metal, y'all going to have to crowd surfing them in the ambulance. Fuck y'all waiting on that subtitle or something. I said if I use this heavy metal, y'all gonna have to crowd surf them to the ambulance. Oh. <laughs> Man, everything from ARs to Glocks in his face, Chinese shoppers, they sound different. You can tell they not from the States. Brakdow, brakdow. Shit that'll make Barack lead the States. And my, my city got me paranoid. So I'm shooting at any cop on the chase. And if Kwa jump in, he get it the same way. I kill his dog now. Me and Calico fighting the same case. I said fuck peace. I like the streets. Shots and sirens. Whole hood got jobs. Cause the block is hiring. Potato on the dead beat. That mean the pop is silent. Me and my niggas will walk through your neighborhood like we trying to stop the violence. Chill for our flash one. Remix that blast, son, and let me get him. No, nah, you fucked up my last one. I said chill for our flash one. Remix that blast, son. Holla, let me get him. No, nah, you fucked up my last one. I'm thinking about shooting the nigga. Pull that beam out. Shots go right through his chest. Rip his spleen out. The doctor pull his dreams out. His mama. Fuck that. Holla, I'm like a clean now. Shooting the nigga, pull that beam out. Shots go right through his chest. Rip his shot, 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 shots go right through his chest. Rip his spleen out. The doctors pull his dreams out. His mama, fuck that holler. Fuck that holler, man. Hitman would take the show on the road and would use his buzz and star power to his advantage in order to leave the country multiple times in 2015. He would be announced as the main event for his KOTD debut in Canada as the Blackout 5 co-headliner versus Shorty Horror. Drake would take personal interest in this matchup and put up an extra $10,000 for the winner of this battle, which was supposed to be judged. Although this would not happen, the battle itself would still be a good showing on both ends and its replay value would ensure Hitman would have a multi-million view battle on his one and only KOTD appearance. His most standout battle this year would actually come in June for his Don't Flop debut for Don't Flop Chicago event as the main event in a 2 on 2 with Averb versus DNA and K-Shine. This would be NWX's second 2 on 2 battle and Averb and Hitman's first. Although many rightfully credit Shine and DNA with the revitalization of 2 on 2s, you can also point to Team St. Louis's performance in this battle as one of the earliest 2 on 2s that showed that different styles could combine and create an explosive team. This battle currently sits at just over 3.5 million views and is one of the rare times that many would give DNA and K Shine a clear loss. 
this would also be the last we would see of Hitman on a major platform for over a year, as after the conclusion of his battles in St. Louis vs Byron Blake and his debut in the UK on Battle of the Brave vs Bonkers in the same year, his TV career would take off, leading to a lengthy hiatus. In 2016, Hitman would continue to make waves on Wild and Out and would become one of the most popular cast members on the show. He would attempt to shed light on the culture by putting together his own card for what was meant to be his own league in early 2016, with mega matches such as Tay Rock vs Arsenal, Calico vs T Top, Chiller Jones vs Averb, and Shotgun Shug vs Hitman on the card. Unfortunately, URL would allegedly block multiple battles on the card, leading to Hitman abandoning his plans to start his own platform until years later. He would return to the main stage after this lengthy break in January 2017 as the headliner for UW's High Stakes 2 card in a highly anticipated grudge match versus Shotgun Shug. His title as a promo king would continue with their Twitter back and forth and highly entertaining face off leading to this match being must-see. On the night itself, Hitman would have another great performance despite the time away from the ring and would arguably take the win over Shug in his hometown. Despite rumours of bad blood between Hitman and URL, tempers would cool and he would make his anticipated URL return for Double Impact 2 as the headliner with Averb vs T-Top and Briz Rawstein. This was a major win for both parties, as Hitman had become arguably the biggest name in battle rap in his four years away from the URL stage. They both would benefit from one another, as URL would be able to bring some new eyes to the platform, whilst Hitman would return to arguably the most respected stage in battle rap and showcase his talent once more. This 2 on 2 would be hampered by the time limits, and would be a drop off from their outing versus DNA and K-Shine. It also wouldn't help that they would get into a heated back and forth with Briz and T-Top backstage prior to the battle that threatened to spill over. This energy would carry on post event with Hitman and Rain getting into a war of words on Twitter that would take some time but eventually be resolved months after. Hitman would keep his foot on the gas and seek immediate redemption as the co-main event on URL Summer Madness 6 in September. This match would be versus K-Shine in a matchup that would see fans debate who overall is the best performer between the two. Despite time issues threatening to derail the battle, especially in Hitman's first in which he was cut off, he would still have one of the performances of the year in this battle and would quite clearly take the first and second rounds over K-Shine by general consensus. He would have several highlight real moments in this battle and arguably would end the debate as to who was the better performer between the two on the night itself. It impressively also currently sits as the highest viewed battle from Summer Madness 6 at just over 4.5 million views. You told T-Rex you gonna knock him out if he disrespect your baby mama or your daughter, nigga. Man, I'll fuck your baby mama in front of your daughter, nigga. I wish you would get mad. Go ahead and try to fight. I ain't Jerome, the prop gun with me. You slap me and you go down the night. I said, I got a question for the fans. Help me understand. This watch was 40 bands. How the fuck I ain't worth 30K a fucking star? This a new hit, man. I got a couple cars, a quarter million stashed in a the chest. These ain't struggle bars. I'm in the limelight. Bang, bang, bang. I came in performing, nigga. I ain't learned that. You watched me for eight battles before they gave you that title. You ain't earned that. Five years ago, I was dragging shit cross stage. Let me talk to him. I was holding his face that he was fucking around and walked on. Shit like that. I'm about to 
that action. I can't wait to show those ops. I hit hard. My right hand, I make Kodo drop. I crop him out like... I'm about that action. I can't wait to show those ops. I hit hard. My right hand, I make Kodo drop. I crop him out like Photoshop. These two machine arms got me walking like Robocop. <laughs> you laughed at me and Verb, because we had a disagreement and decided to battle and handle our shit with words. But Dot Mob, I mean Rex, this ain't no diss to you, but y'all was acting like y'all fuck with each other for the camera and really didn't. See, that's what bitches do. You don't even talk to Rex. And y'all used to eat off that menu together. Vern gave me the first Showtime. I gave him the first remix. We got paid, hopped in the whip, and left the venue together. <laughs> hey, you, un you unloyal ass bitch. I can't believe you. You had the nerve to give a fake five to the same hand that used to feed you. <laughs> I'm a beast, then you know that. I bring it to your show clap, my brother out of jail. Hey, nigga, don't make me go back. Hey, nigga. 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 Hitman's career on TV at this point would become his main focus, and rightly so, as he was beginning to see major financial benefits from his increased status. He would only have one battle in 2018, and this would be against an opponent who had arguably become the face of the URL in Tay Rock. This matchup was a long time in the making, and many would pick Tay Rock simply due to how active he was and the great back to back performances he was racking up. On the night itself, this matchup would clearly be the battle of the night and the saving grace on a card that would arguably rank as the worst summer madness to date. Despite the battle being crowned the battle of the night, the large consensus would give Hitman the win in this battle with him having the better moments and haymakers. Huge credit has to be given to Hitman here, as despite his main priority not being battle rap, he would still arguably beat two of the best active battlers in K-Shine and Tay Rock back to back. Following another small break, Hitman would return in February 2019 and give a major look to Casino in what was supposed to be a judged battle for $50,000 in Ohio. Following this, he would remain active and in May would make a blockbuster return as the headliner for his RBE debut on the closure card versus Bill Collector. This grudge would be a must-see match as many would be intrigued to see if the battle would actually finish since things had already gotten physical between the two camps. On the night itself, Hitman and Bill would both leave it all on the floor and have an instant classic that would carry the intensity of the grudge throughout but also see them resolve the issue, shake hands and walk away on better terms. Personally, this battle is one that I feel Hitman stepped his pen up to one of the highest levels seen yet from him, and this is further credit to him in knowing that the small room would require a more intricate lyrical style. The replay value of this battle is evident as it currently sits at just over 5.4 million views. Man, fuck your super duper scope. Man, fuck your super duper scope that'll hit you from Japan. You got me mixed up with that other kid. You ain't the only nigga with a scope. Cause the one I gotta hit you from the same spot my little brother did. Oh. I'm the personal type. You see, I just gotta pull up like I'm potty trained. Point blank range. Shotty bang. Stomach shot. Think piggy bank. I bet the whole inside of his body change. Oh. Oh. I've been rapping the same way for 10 years. I'ma forever be cold. Cause I know as long as real gangsters in the crowd, my style will never get old. I'll black both your eyes again. I got two-way skills. If we keep this shit 100, 
I blue face Bill. They gonna call him Drapiana. I, they gonna call him Drapiana. I blue face. Man, picture me. Lose the hand with the hands. No fucking way. Man, y'all gonna find Bill on the floor like it's my lucky day. Yo, yo, and leave her double knotted like long shoestrings. Since he came in there, we jumped him. Fuck it. Trap a lean on him. Smooth criminal with the kill. How I lean on him. Then I got some lean. Since he claiming that we jumped him, fuck it. Trap a lean on him, smooth criminal with the kill. I lean on him, then I got some lean on him. And if he run, bow, holding the nigga back like, no, nah, so don't need swing on him. Yeah. 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 I high speed from the cops, I do the digital dash. I'll put you back in the days. He gonna revisit the past. Yeah. I got something just for you. I'ma get rid of his ass, boy. This. Sticker have your name on it like a visitor's pass. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 30 player poker game. That's a big deal. I was gonna roll on him with a loud toy. That's a big wheel. Up the burners and make this bitch nigga sit still. But watch draw on him and mark him out when I already know this counterfeit bill. Hitman's final showing before another hiatus would be in August for arguably URL's biggest card ever to this point, Summer Impact. He would team up with John John the Don and face off against Goods and Charlie Clips in Carolina. This battle is one in which I feel Hitman and John John's performance is severely underrated as a 2 on 2 team. With their synergy, crowd control, performance and heavy haymakers leading to them beating clips and goods quite convincingly on their very first outing as a duo. Despite Loaded Hollows, The Monsters, The Bardashians, NWX and DFB all having excellent performances, my own performers of the night would go to John John and Hitman. Despite the star-studded names on the card, they impressively would still, to date, have the highest viewed battle on Summer Impact, with it reaching just over 7.6 million views. No games! Man, you caught a body in Houston. Don't say no names. But you win noodles on Jack. Boy, I told you keep it low, man. No. Phone bait? Phone bait? Or sniper from here? Show him that scope, eh? Never mind. Hey, Holla. What's this for? Now I'm giving you the shot. Oh, close range. <laughs> the show presumes it's gonna be a lot of closed caskets and open wounds. <laughs> Sound like Jason approaching soon. That's why you need a silencer. For what? So you can hold the boom like. <laughs> you hear that? No. See, I'm still teaching the nigga how to control. <laughs> you selling? I'm tired of all this swag you styling. I give you a buck fifty in a hole. I'm going past my balance and anything he got in him, I'ma stab it out him. Damn, how much you trying to make goods leak? A half a gun. <laughs> but goods don't play about his daughter. That's a hell of a fact. Anytime somebody brings her up, he be ready to. I say what I want. You better relax. What if he swing on you? I'm sure good. No better. Than that. Post pandemic, a bombshell would be dropped on the battle rap community with the announcement of RBE's Max Out card in April. 2021. The mega match of Cassidy vs Hitman Holler would immediately send the battle world into a frenzy and would almost instantly sell out whilst also generating record pay-per-view sales and being one of the biggest events that reintroduced the culture to battle rap events being back outside. With Hitman and Cassidy both being promotion kings, their heated and hilarious face-off, which RBE had the great idea to film and put out several weeks before the battle, would instantly go viral and would be picked up by almost every notable hip-hop media outlet and several platforms outside of hip-hop, including Hot New Hip-Hop, This Is 50, 
Power 105, Power 98, The Shade Room, The Jasmine Brand, On Smash, World Star Hip Hop, Vlad TV, and the Joe Budden Podcast, just to name a few. The Face Off would take on a life of its own and eventually would become the most viewed Face Off ever. And it currently sits as RBE's third highest viewed video on the platform at just over 3.9 million views. Hitman and Cassidy would stick the landing and they would provide the battle world with a good back and forth and what many would call Cassidy's best on-camera battle since his return. Their memorable moments in this battle and the huge hype from the face-off would lead to it becoming RBE's most viewed battle ever. This would complete a trifecta for Hitman and he would become the holder of all three of RBE's most viewed videos with the face-off coming in at just over 3.9 million, his Bill Collector battle coming in at 5.4 million and his Cassidy battle sitting at just over 6 million views. He would carry the momentum into the summer and RBE would book him for his second consecutive battle versus Calico for Max Art 2. This would not only provide Hitman a chance for revenge in regard to their earlier battle on Gladiator School, but would, in Hitman's own words, give him two of his biggest paydays back to back that he had ever received in battle rap. On the night itself, both MCs would put on and Hitman would add another great battle to his resume. The replay value is evident as it sits at just over 2.5 million views. Despite this major success, another unfortunate tragedy would happen to Hitman in late 2021. His longtime partner Cinnamon would be home alone and would fall victim to several home invaders that were attempting to rob the home. Hitman was unfortunately out of town, but would be on FaceTime with Cinnamon once she was woken up by the invaders. She would bravely take her gun and shoot at the robbers whilst they were attempting to enter her bedroom. In the process of doing this however, one of the robbers would return fire. This shot would lead to a bullet piercing Cinnamon's cheek and exiting through the back of her head. Fortunately the robbers would flee and a friend of Hitman's that lived close by would be able to get to her very quickly in order to call for first aid. Her slow and gradual recovery would understandably become Hitman's main focus for the remainder of the year and beyond and thankfully she would go on to make a full recovery. In 2022, Hitman would not touch a battle rap stage, but would instead revisit his idea of starting his own roster of talent that he abandoned several years ago. The main difference between him starting a league now and back then would be that his money and connections had substantially grown. He would focus on cultivating new talent and would create Bags and Bodies a show that would see 16 MCs living in a house and taking on battles and challenges with a $50,000 cash prize up for grabs for the winner of the tournament. Another $50,000 would be doled out in cash prizes to winners of the multiple challenges that would be seen throughout the season. This platform and the buzz around it would see many names gain a major boost in popularity and status from being on the show, such as Hope Trilly, Coach Corleone, Rock Lee, The God Yogi, J2, Fendi, and the eventual winner of the tournament, Cali Smooth, just to name a few. The success and buzz generated by season one would lead to a season two being greenlit with even more talent receiving shine, such as Capo, Just Cuz, Gorilla Monsoon, Dollar Bill, and Piranha, just to name a few. Season 3 has also been greenlit and this looks like a successful project that Hitman will look to continue growing. On the battlefront in February 2023, he would return to the main stage after almost two years away for his Chrome 23 debut against Easy the Block Captain. Hitman would essentially validate Easy's entrance to top tier with this mega match being his first after his public split from URL. 
This match would dominate the battle rap culture and on the night itself, both MCs would bring some great material and the fans would have heavy discourse around the winner of the battle. Many by general consensus would give this battle to Easy, but this is far from a foregone conclusion as Hitman's material does provide a case for him to potentially take two of the three rounds from this battle. His only other match in 2023 would be for his fourth RBE battle versus Pontiac's own Ill Will as the headliner for Max Out 3 in September. With this battle, Hitman would make history as the first to headline every Max Out to date and despite many having reservations on how he would adapt to the blue room, he would go on to prove his talent could still acclimate to any size room. On the night itself, the material and performance from both MCs would cap off an excellent night for RBE with the match itself instantly going into classic territory. The battle would win Champions Battle of the Year for 2023 which in turn would help Max Out 3 win the event of the year for 2023 and Hitman would cap off an excellent end to the year by being awarded the Champions Executive Gold of the Year award in 2023. Hitman's career is undeniably Hall of Fame worthy and when the book is closed he could very well be considered the most decorated battler of all time. Despite my best efforts, I keep coming across more and more accolades and achievements that he has accomplished. This leads me to theorise that I may have captured the vast majority of them but not all and I would ask those of you that are day one die hard Hitman fans to fill me in on the few stats that I may have missed. Starting with one of his most impressive stats is his record on the road. Of his 38 on camera battles, only 15 of them are actually in St. Louis. Percentage wise, this works out at 60% of his battles being on the road. He has to be credited for not being afraid to take fights in battlers hometowns and more impressively, his ability to grab pivotal wins away from home. His drawing power as a main eventer has not only benefited him throughout his career but his peers also. He impressively stands as the highest viewed one on one battle for a number of his fellow battlers including but not limited to K-Shine, Sue Surf, Averb, Cassidy, Shotgun Shug, Easy the Block Captain, John John the Don, Bill Collector and more. In the case of some of these MCs their Hitman battle is the only one that is in the multi-million view bracket, again evidencing just how much of a draw he is. It is also worth noting that Hitman has visited almost every major league with him counting URL, Street Status, Don't Flop, RBE, Chrome 23, King of the Dot, Fight Club, UW and Guerrilla Warfare amongst his leagues visited. Whilst visiting these leagues, Hitman has built an incredible resume with it reading as a who's who in battle rap. It includes but is not limited to Cassidy, Sue Surf, Arsenal, Conceited, Charlie Clips, Averb, Bill Collector, Hollow the Don, Calico, T-Rex, Shorty Horror, John John the Don, Young Ill, Big T, K-Shine, Ill Will, Easy the Block Captain and many more. With many of these matchups, Hitman was booked as the main event due to his performance and drawing power. His list of events that he has co-main evented or main evented includes some of the most notable and influential cards in battle rap history, including The Midwest Massacre, Summer Madness 1, King of the Arch, Summer Madness 4, Blackout 5, The Crown, High Stakes 2, Don't Flop Chicago, Double Impact 2, Summer Madness 6, Summer Madness 7, Closure, Max Out 1, Max Out 2, Max Out 3 and Chrome 23 Anniversary card. His ability to create classics with heavy replay value has led to him being the 4th highest viewed battler in the world. 
What is even more impressive is that he has less than half of the battles that the top three English speaking battles in the world in DNA, Charlie Clips and Arsenal have, which effectively makes him the highest viewed battler in the world that is English speaking with the least amount of battles. He also ranks to no one's surprise as the highest viewed battler ever from St. Louis and the Midwest altogether. His total views come in at just over a staggering 91.2 million views total, with 24 of his total 38 battles reaching over 1 million views. These millions of views have led to him setting multiple records on multiple different leagues. He has the highest viewed battle on the URL channel versus Sue Surf, which comes in at 9.7 million views. Even more impressively, he holds 5 of the top 10 most viewed battles on the URL channel. This is more than any of his peers. He also has the historical achievement of the first battle to ever hit 1 million views on URL versus Arsenal. And he also holds the record of being the first intergender battle on URL versus Farah Funeral and Shuni the Rapper. The two highest viewed battles on RBE also belong to Hitman, with his Cassidy and Bill Collector battles giving him a combined 11 point million views total. To complete the trifecta, he holds the highest viewed face off in battle rap history, which also doubles up as the third highest viewed video on the RBE channel, at just over 3.9 million views. The streak continues with him having the highest viewed battles on Guerrilla Warfare versus Charlie Clips, Street Status versus KD, Bonkers on Battle of the Brave and Easy the Block Captain on Chrome 23. It is easy to get lost in the dizzying numbers Hitman puts up, but other important stats of his include winning the St. Louis Fight Club tournament, his participation on Wild and Out as a permanent cast member for over 8 seasons, and his status as a league owner of Bags and Bodies, which has played host to over 30 different battle MCs and has put their talent out there for the masses to see. At this point in the game, Hitman literally has nothing left to prove and has cemented his legacy not only in his region but worldwide. Being that he has always known his worth, he has not exhausted his matchups and although it is very unlikely he will get to them all, he still has major bags available to pick up with mega matches against the likes of New Jersey Twerk, Geechee, Rumnitty, Murder Mook, Loaded Lux, Disaster, Daylight, Briz Rawstein, T-Top and Big K amongst many others. We as fans should appreciate that he still returns to put on for the culture as he just as easily could have taken Conceited's path and purely focused on wiling out and his other endeavours. Many in the culture will always show Hitman love for his work in putting on for himself and his city. It is important to give him his flowers for continuing to bring excitement to the game in the way only he can. His contributions to the game including his catchy slogans, the remixes, his many battle rap highlights, moments of show out and his countless legendary lines and classics deserve major plaudits and I hope whatever direction he chooses to take his career in next, he excels at. Salute to Mr Ball Game, and long may the good work continue. If you enjoyed this video, consider sending it to other battle rap fans that you feel may enjoy this type of content. Unfortunately, due to Core to Lab, none of the videos are monetized. However, if you'd like to support the channel and ensure that work keeps being done on it, do consider visiting my Buy Me a Coffee page at www.buymeacoffee.com slash rapredux. Major salute to those of you that have supported the channel consistently, it is very much appreciated. And until next time, peace.